This wonderful engraving from a mid-17th century book by Malachias Geiger entitled Microcosmos Hypochondriacus purports to illustrate symbolically the chemical preparation of the potable or drinkable gold. But it seems rather to summarise many of the ideas embodied in the alchemical philosophy of that time. This emblem shows us the world seen alchemically as the interaction of two realms, that of the heavens above and the earth below. At the interface of these two realms stands the arbor vitae, the tree of life. In the heights of the heavens we are shown the Trinity, the Father Jehovah, the Son as the Lamb of God, and the Dove of the Holy Spirit. These exist in a sphere beyond and above the stars. They emanate a spiritual light and are gazed on by the surrounding heavenly hosts. In the lower heavens we find the fixed stars and the planets. Two angels stand at the top of this heaven and mediate the spiritual light from the trinity above. They hold a banner on which is written, all from the one, all in the one, and all through the one. Immediately below them is a zodiacal sphere with the twelve signs and the seven planets. The planets each ray down a beam of influence onto the earth below. Within the circle of the zodiac, we see two Uruburai or snakes forming a circle by biting each other's tails. They enclose a space within which a series of triplicities are presented in four concentric circles. The outermost has three ways of seeing the year, the annus solaris or year marked by the passage of the sun, the year shown by the movements of the stars, and the year we experience through the seasons and the cycling of the four winds. Next we are asked to consider the three mercuries in alchemy. The common mercury, the corporeal mercury and the philosophical mercury. Then the three sulphurs are brought before us. The common combustible sulphur, the fixed or incombustible form of sulphur and the ethereal sulphur. Finally, we come to see a realm of the three salts, common salt of the earth, the sol centrale, or the central salt, and the salt of the elements. Thus, we have the three alchemical principles, salt, sulphur, and mercury, seen in three different forms. A final circle makes us aware that there are four fires needed in the opus the alchemical work. At the centre of these circles is a triangle with a symbol of mercury. We also notice upward and downward pointing triangles which merge at the bottom to form the interlaced triangles of the seal of Solomon. We will see these aspects also reflected in the lower earthly realm. The influences of the highest heavens mediated through the planets, ray down onto the earth below. Set in the centre is a tree of life. Beside this stands a crowned female figure, holding in her left hand the Book of Wisdom, while in her right she holds out a scepter, around which is a banner declaring the hermetic axiom from the emerald tablet. That which is above is as that which is below. From her mouth a little banner proceeds, declaring, Wisdom is dominated by the stars. Above her, in the canopy of the tree, we find the seven metals, reflections of the planets above, and eleven key alchemical substances, including sulphur, tartar, salt, sal ammoniac, cinnabar, vitriol, and so on. 
tree stands on a small hillock and its three roots penetrate the earth. To the right and left of the tree are two mountains. Above the mountain on the left, which is emitting flames from its summit, is a phoenix who stands on two globes, one of fire containing the symbol of a salamander living in flames, and the other of air which contains the symbol of a bird. This phoenix has one talon on each sphere and is receiving a beam of influences, primarily from the planet Jupiter. Above the mountain on the right, an eagle hovers, holding two spheres, one in each talon. The sphere of the water element being a ship on the ocean, and the other representing the earth, with its depiction of a mountainous landscape. At the base of the mountain on the left, we see three birds, crow, swan and peacock. The text beside them states, I am the black, white, yellow and red. This is, of course, the classic colour sequence in alchemy. These birds seem to be under the influence of rays from the planet Mars. In the background, two human figures are killing a small winged dragon. One is female, and as she has a bow at her feet, we presume this to be Diana the Huntress, while the other male figure has a lyre at his feet and may be thought of as Apollo. Under the mountain on the right is a cave within which we see an alchemist and his assistant at work in a laboratory. Outside this sits Mercury with his caduceus. Two figures, Sol and Luna, leading two lions, approach the alchemical cave and are greeted by Mercury. This tableau is receiving the influences of the planet Mercury. Above the cavern are two carved blocks. The lower one bears the message, May you have a long life, health, glory and an infinity of gifts. In the centre of this inscription is a circular space with an image familiar from Michael Myers Atalanta Fugiens, illustrating the alchemical maxim, From a man and a woman make a circle, then a square, then a triangle, and finally a circle. Then you will have the Philosopher's Stone. Here we have a reference to the three alchemical principles, salt, sulphur and mercury, now working in the earthly realm. On the block above, we see the interlaced triangles with six planets in the vertices and presumably the sun at the centre. On top of this block is the final alchemical bird symbol, the pelican, seated on its nest and feeding its chicks on the blood from its own breast. This symbol, imported into alchemy from conventional Christianity, then seems to be emblematic of the final reddening or tincturing process. This wonderfully detailed engraving summarises the alchemical philosophy and brings together into a coherent narrative many of the symbols used in emblems and in particular the alchemical birds.